Hey, Steven, how's it going, mate? Not too bad yourself. And great, thanks, bro. Can't complain, man. Nice. Awesome, man. Yeah, I just want to thank you for taking out the time to uh, do this interview. I know you're quite a, a busy man and so on. So, yeah, man, just thank you for taking time out of the, the, the schedule. Nah, no worries at all. No worries at all. <laughs> Uh, awesome, man. So, yeah, man, firstly, I want to honor you as an um, amazing rugby player. I know there's a lot of fly-offs um, who looked up to you, and there was a lot of flanks uh, who wanted to tackle you. So <laughs> it was quite a, quite a tough one, but um, being a quality player that, that you are, man, um, yeah, I just really want to honor you, especially playing for the All Blacks and the Chiefs. Um, I, knew, I know a few times, uh, being a Shark supporter as well, and when I see you played against him, I was like, man, <laughs> this guy better have all day. <laughs> but, um, but uh, yeah, so basically I started, um, started these interviews. I played a bit of rugby uh, myself as well. And um, unfortunately, I didn't make it um, as far as I wanted. Um, played a bit under 19 at the Lions in UJ and went a bit at the Sharks. But yeah, competition was like Marcel could see Pierre, Steph and um, Chris Clutie, so <laughs> there was hectic competition. And then, um, yeah, I played a bit at Border Bulldogs. It's, it's a small union, the Sun, and I uh, played my last year in Ireland for a club over there. And uh, my contract didn't get renewed, and I was like, man, what am I going to do now? So, yeah, basically just want to take this and inspire the guys uh, to prepare for life after rugby, whatever dream that they have um, personally. So, yeah, but before we carry on, um, if you can just tell the viewers, who is Stephen Donald? And, um, yo, man, why did you start off uh, playing rugby? Um, oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's mostly just what we do. You know, what you do as a New Zealand boy. And uh, my family were all heavily involved in it. And older brother and dad and all the rest of it. So, it was just a natural thing. And all my mates around the town were into it. So, yeah, we just started off in a four or five at the local club. And, uh, yeah, just all flowed from there, really. That's awesome, man. So you basically just had a gifted from, from growing up. I know there was some definitely hard work you needed to put in, but um, yeah, man, that's, that's awesome to see when, when you pick up the ball and just have such awesome talent, um, what you have. And uh, Stephen, tell me, what was your biggest setback that you have had in your career and how did you bounce back from it? Um, yeah, I, I don't know if you can... I don't, I don't know about putting a single thing or a single event as a setback. Um, I mean, it's, it's just a life and, and sports and, and everything that goes with. It's just a, you know, it's just a road that's not straight for yeah. for many of us. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep fronting up and keep bouncing up. And I guess um, the lucky thing with uh, rugby is there's always another game and uh, you're only as good as your last performance is the old saying. But, um yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really look at any one setback or, or anything. You know, I, I didn't have the smoothest ride throughout my career, and um, I'm glad I didn't. You know, it was, um, there's always things to learn from, and uh, you just got to keep fronting up. And, and I guess it becomes a bit of a, a personal thing about how you bounce back from things, I guess. Yeah, definitely. And I must say, during, during your career as well, um, I know there was a lot of critique um, to you as a player. But um, you just stuck in there, man. Uh, when you get on the pitch, you like boots on, switch on, and it's just on a. Um, I mean, that's a that, that's a different kind of mindset. And when you look at, um, I mean, the All Blacks and uh, rugby players in New Zealand are basically known for um, that big match temperament. I mean, when you guys, um, I, I remember when I watched you guys play in it was in 2013 when the All Blacks played against Ireland, and they scored literally um, in that last bit or in, in the overtime of the game. I mean, that's the type of mindset you have to have um, in life. So I just want to encourage all the viewers out there, if you have a dream, if you have a passion, just pursue, pursue it and don't give up on it. And um, Stephen, so whilst you were playing rugby as well, um, did you prepare for life after rugby? Because I didn't at all. I was, <laughs> when I was in school, I, was going to, I told myself I'm going to become a springbok. I'm going to play full time. And that's, that's it. Uh, yep. Uh, d during it all, um, well... I say I prepared. I went to university all through it um, and sort of did one or two papers um, a semester and, and slowly took away. And, and by the end, well, a couple of years ago, after about 15 years of doing it, um, ended up getting a, uh, a business management degree from, from Waikato University. So it um, took me about 15 years to get, but I uh, did get my degree. Um, yeah. If I'll use it, I have no idea. Um, and... I'm still very not 
sure on what it all looks like as far as at the end of rugby, and um, which is obviously very soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, I guess I've done a little bit of planning for for life after rugby, and because um, yeah, I guess as you always told, it it's always you never know when it's going to happen. But um, yeah, I guess. Uh, the short answer is yes, I've done some planning, but uh, am I confident of where I'm going to go still? No, nah, not really. No, that's awesome, man. No, I, I think you're probably going to have a, a longer career than Skulk Brett. <laughs> that guy <laughs> seems like he's going to play forever. <laughs> yeah, I saw he's still going there last year. It was great to see. Yeah, I know, definitely. Eh? And um, yeah, so studies, I definitely think is an important part. And I think, especially uh, when you look at players like, like your caliber and a lot of other guys, um, spending time in the books and making sure it doesn't matter how long it takes. But um, how would you, how how important would you say is it uh, to go study whilst you're playing rugby, especially as well? Um, oh yeah, it just gives you something else to do too, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm I was I was doing probably an hour or so a day, and uh, yeah, it just gives you gives you an hour or so where you're not doing footy really. So it's yeah. It, it, it is what it is, but um, yeah, if you allocate some time to it, it's probably not that hard, to be fair. Yeah, definitely. And I think... Sorry, sorry about that, man. So, yeah, basically, so to take that hour out a day and to rather spend it on studies than um, playing Xbox in... If you're going to play Xbox, make sure you become a professional because there's some guys that really make good money out of it. But I wouldn't really recommend um, that kind of route. And uh, if you if you look at the youngsters today, I mean, um, there's some amazing talent coming up. I know from New Zealand, South Africa, actually all around the world, there's some quality kids coming up and they're getting massive paychecks from a very young age. But the thing is, uh, my concern is basically... Uh, they're not really understanding how to um, manage their finances or um, just really taking good advice or they don't have the right role models or the right mentors to, to actually follow to become a full person who they uh, sh should be. So what would your advice be for, for these youngsters um, from a young age growing, growing up? Oh, I think, and I think you read, everyone's a bit different. Like uh, in New Zealand, they've got, plenty of uh, resources and that around them and uh, there's um, there's heaps of people that they can call upon and uh, around their teams they, there's heaps of um, employed people to, to sort them out or stuff like that so um, yeah it's just a matter of listening to listening to it all and, and taking it on board really no awesome man and um, yeah so in, in New Zealand as well I mean I, I saw you guys are going to play some rugby um, that side it's coming up. I think it looks like you guys are planning on uh, to play play in June. So it's quite good to see that there's going to be some sport on t television, which is going to be be live. Excited for that. I think the the virus thing has taken everyone uh, a set back and to reflect on what their plans are and uh, where they want to move forward. And um, yourself as a rugby career and as you are playing right now, are you still enjoying it as day one? Um, is it a still a massive passion um, for yourself? Because I know with time, some people just get into the habit of things and it's not a passion anymore. Is it uh, still a growing passion within you? Yeah, still loving it. So, uh, yeah, obviously getting getting very close towards the end, to be fair. But, uh, yeah, still loving it. And, um, yeah, obviously when you get to this point in time, you, you know there's not much more left. So, uh, I guess you probably you might love, love it even more. Or something. Oh, I certainly am. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, you sort of, you're not you're not guaranteed many games more at this age. So uh, yeah, just enjoy it while it's still going, really. No, that's awesome, mate. And um, yeah, so basically for yourself, um, I heard the story when it came to you being called up uh, for the All Blacks in the in the World Cup, and um, yeah, man, just nailing that kick and um, securing it for the, for the All Blacks. But also, how is, how tough is it not um, being part of the All Blacks setup anymore? And I know for every single rugby player, even if they're still playing for the All Blacks currently, there's going to become a day um, where you don't wear the black jersey anymore. It's not the lights around you, and those kind of things. Uh, mentally wise, how tough how tough is it actually um, to be to take that step step back? And how do you actually face it? Uh, oh, <laughs> when you get to this age, it's uh... 
it's it's fairly well in the memory uh, distance memory now. But uh, oh, I mean, yeah, obviously when you're a kid, it's all you want to do. So uh, obviously a big part of your life and uh, and, a, and a big reason why you you sort of um, play footy, you know, especially as New Zealand, it's what you want to do. But um, yeah, it's obviously if you can finish and, and finish when you want to finish, it's great. But, you know, obviously there's not many that get that opportunity. So, um, yeah, it's it's tough. For, it's tough for some, I guess. But, um, yeah, I guess at my point in life and with family and, and kid sort of on the horizons and one kid at the moment, I guess, um, yeah, it's it's uh, there's other things to look forward to now. So it's, uh, it's sort of, you know, moving on and, and just in that normal life, really. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. Yeah, and I just want to encourage every single viewer, every rugby player, um, to make sure that you grab all of your family and memories as well. Rugby is an amazing journey. It's an amazing time of your life. And uh, treasure all, all those memories of winning cups, playing games, travel all, all across the world. But um, yeah, man, just stay strong. I know there's some rugby players going through difficult times and um, really struggling with some mental issues and really not staying focused or positive um, you guys are more than welcome to reach out to myself as well and um yeah Stephen, so i just want to thank you for the interview but before we go um if you can just give a word of encouragement for every single viewer and every single person around the world rugby players especially um yeah during this lockdown phase yeah it's uh it's obviously certainly an interesting time but uh no i mean it's it is what you make of it obviously Everyone's going to be in different circumstances, but um, I guess for me and and my little bubble, as the as we know, uh, it's it's been a good time with family and and uh, and looking forward to hopefully, especially New Zealand seems to be coming out the other side of it. So uh, looking forward to being able to get out of the house and uh, and uh, sort of walk down the road a bit and uh, yeah, just hopefully life can uh, start to drift a little bit back towards a bit a bit normal. No, definitely, man. And, um, yeah.